a third distinctive teaching, which has to do with the second point on the way of salvation, has to do with something about justification and the forgiveness of sins. Now, I've already said justification by faith is a common Christian teaching, something we share with other Christians, but there is a distinctively Wesleyan nuance about this. And it's the idea that we can feel, can sense that our sins have been forgiven. John Wesley defined justification as, quote, pardon, comma, the forgiveness of sins, close quotes. Uh, he elsewhere speaks of it as a relative change. By that he means a change in our relationship to God uh, that comes before the real change that is involved with sanctification, when God begins to change who we actually are. He insists that faith in Christ is the sole necessary and sufficient cause of justification. Uh, but, as I've already indicated, his, his definition of faith is complicated because there is a sense in which, following Hebrews 11.1, 1, every human being has faith, uh, 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 the substance of things not seen. Um, but what he means here is a very particular sense of faith, Christian faith, when the, the thing that is not seen is Jesus Christ. So when we come to trust in Christ for ourselves, uh, that's justifying faith, and it is that on the basis of which we come into a right relationship with God, we are justified. A critical issue following from this is the idea that uh, when we truly believe in Christ, when we are justified, we are given an assurance of pardon, uh, an assurance that our sins have been forgiven, what John Wesley sometimes describes as the witness of God's Spirit, a very particular kind of spiritual knowledge that comes from the experience of the reality that God has forgiven our sins. This is a controversial topic. Uh, at first, right after 1738, John Wesley consistently maintained that if you do not have that experience that your sins have been forgiven, you are really not justified. You are not really truly a Christian in that sense of the word. He seems to have struggled with that idea for many years. He met many people who simply said, look, I trust in Christ, I believe in Christ, but I haven't had that wonderful sense of uh, the forgiveness or the assurance that my sins are forgiven. He later allowed that there might be exempt cases in which a person didn't feel that assurance of pardon, but nevertheless he continued to insist that it's the normative experience of Christians, and it really becomes part of Methodist culture. I've got my students reading 19th century Methodist leader who preached in Texas in 1815, as weird as that may seem, and this guy William Stevenson really talks as if if you don't have this experience that your sins are forgiven, you are really not forgiven. You were really not justified. I think that became part of Methodist popular culture along the way. Sometimes the nuances of John Wesley's own uh, thought on this, the fact that he would allow for exempt cases, um, wasn't always recognized by the Methodist preachers. John Wesley stated on one occasion that he preferred not to use the term conversion but uh, on the few occasions where he does use it, uh, it denotes one's appropriation of justifying faith. And so that's a cardinal point in Methodist religious experience. Now the thing, w w whether you accept this, this idea that an assurance of pardon is a necessary part of religious experience or not, uh, I would say don't forget the nuance that for Wesley, uh, justification comes by faith, and that is not simply a train of ideas in the head. It really has to engage the heart the affections, I would say, the whole being, just as uh, with sanctification we come to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and those aren't four separate little categories. That, that really adds up to the whole thing, the, the, the wholeness of who we are as human beings. Similarly with justification and faith, our faith comes when we, with our whole being, entrust ourselves to Jesus Christ. <laughs>